Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about typed dictionaries and typed arrays inside of Godot 4.4. So typed dictionaries are brand new, typed arrays have been around for a while in Godot 4. So I have just a simple node in this scene, and I'm attaching a simple node script to it. So I'm going to edit the script a bit. So let's start by um, adding a export. So at export, and this is going to be for a default array and it'll be of type array. And then we'll also add in a default dictionary, which is going to be of type dictionary. I'll, I'll save the scene and the scripts to the project, and then I'll click on my node and we open up the inspector. So that you'll see that a so that you'll see that the basic array with no typing will hold a sequence of items that are of type variant. So if I click on this edit button, you can see all the different supported types inside of an array. So for things like resources that would fall under object and resources can have many subcategories, including custom class names that you've created. So there may be cases where you actually don't want to type your dictionaries or arrays in the sense that you'd be able to support different types of data um, for both the array slots or the keys and value of your dictionary. However, in a lot of cases, I feel it's preferable when you have very specific typing. Um, so you know exactly what you're expecting to be in each position in the array of the dictionary. So for instance, I could go here and set a Boolean, and then the next one could be a string if I wanted, like a string name, so something like hello. And those are two different types there. Okay, so then we have the basic dictionary. So a dictionary takes a key and assigns it to a value. So when you need um, two different pieces of data to be related to each other, then a dictionary is super helpful for that. So for instance, you could have a string for the name of a property that you're setting. So something like, let's say buildable. And then the value can be a Boolean. So we check that on. And then if we're associating this with some other node or resource object, then we can check the dictionaries, read the key buildable, and then we can see the value of that string property. And then we'll be able to read that as is it off or on, and then adjust our code accordingly. However, the however the flaw here is that there's no guarantee that the type of data that is coming out of reading keys and values or array positions is going to be the expected type in code. And also reading the code directly, it's a little hard to interpret what you expected to be in the array. So you might have to say a comment like, this holds cookies as some resource type or something like that. But if you have typing, then of course, when we add typing, we can add stuff like at export var um, typed array. And this is going to be a re an array. And then in square brackets, we give it the type that we need specifically. So we could say it's an array of string. So we save that. And now if we open this up, every element is going to automatically be assigned to that string type. So not only do we not need to set for each element if we're editing in the inspector, uh, which type it's going to be like up here because it's already assigned here. Uh, but also we are ensuring that every position holds a string. So likewise with a typed dictionary, we could do at export var typed dictionary, and this could be a dictionary. And I believe it's like this uh, string and then comma the second type. So maybe we do string bool and save that. And now when we add our elements in here, the type is already assigned here. So the first one type buildable, the value on or off. So just like that, we assign um, a string property name and a on off Boolean for each value in this array. So it's much quicker to edit in the inspector and you're sure about which data types are both on the key side, which is the first one here, the string, and then the second one Boolean here. So I think where these are extremely useful is if you have custom resource types. So uh, back up on the array here, let's just say that we have another element and we want it to reference a resource. So we click edit and then we have an object. And then the object can be any of these types. As you can see, there's a ton of different classes that would qualify as a resource. But uh, what if you just want it to be one specific type of resource? So I'll go ahead and create a resource class. I'll just right click new script. Uh, this will inherit from resource. So let's just call it the cookie class. We create that going to go into here. We can see it extends resource. If we give it a class name, the cookie, uh, then it will be easy to type that as a 
dictionary or array typing. So now we go back to this class and let's do another at export var cookie array. And this is gonna be an array of cookie. So even more specific than just saying it's a resource, we're gonna say it's the specific type of resource we've customized for our class. So we click back into here, we have an array of cookie, we add one, and now in this dropdown, instead of giving every single resource class imaginable, as you would if we just did this array of resource, as you can see, this is kind of a pain, especially if you want a quick load. We have cookie there at the bottom, but let's make it specific. It's an array of cookies. So now if you want a quick load, you just click here and you do quick load. You find any saved resources in your project, or you could create a new one right here. So let's create a new cookie. Um, and then in each of these array positions, you'd be able to see its custom data. So for instance, maybe I could do at export var um, icon or texture icon, which is a texture, you can assign that here. Uh, once again, there's a lot of different texture classes, so you can make it more specific if you want, but um, there may be cases where you actually want to allow a bunch of different types. So Atlas texture is handy if you're dealing with an entire sprite sheet, but you want to grab one region from it, for instance. But in any case, we have our resource, so we can save it to the project, right click, save as, I'll say cookie test. Yeah, cookie test.tres, which is the standard format for saving a resource. And then uh, now when we add more elements to any typed cookie array, then we can quick load our cookie just like that. And we don't have that massive drop down menu that you would have with other uh, types like an array of resource or a untyped array. And the same thing, once again, is going to, of course, apply to the typed dictionary. So at export var, um, let's say cookie dictionary. And then we have a dictionary that starts with cookie and the second type or the value will be a Boolean. So in our cookie dictionary, we can quick load our cookie and then we wanna say, is this cookie on or off? Well, we could say it's on and then uh, add, an, add that as a key value pair. Remember, remember that when you're dealing with dictionaries, you have to hit add before it's actually in this key value pair listing. So we'll create a new cookie. This can be like cookie2.tres and this one will be off. Okay, interesting that when I saved it, it didn't um, stay there, but uh, let's quick load, quick load it from the project, add it as a key value pair, and then, yeah. So, yeah, once again, makes it easy to assign, but also easy to know exactly which data you're dealing with. And in a nutshell, that is pretty much all you need to know about uh, dictionaries and default arrays. So there may be cases where you want to leave it untyped if you need to just support multiple different data types, more specifically anything that is variant type in Godot all at once. But if you want to be specific and you want to make sure that you're forcing a certain data type in your array, then a typed array is handy. And if you need to associate a specific type of key with a specific type of value, which I feel is very useful, um, then go with a typed dictionary. Now, uh, once again, note that typed dictionaries are only supported in 4.4, which is currently in the dev version for Godot. So if you try to type this and it's not working, you're probably not on Godot 4.4, which uh, you can currently get on the Godot Engine website if you need it. So that's all you need to know. I've been Chris. I hope this was a helpful tutorial into arrays, dictionaries, and more specifically, typed dictionaries and typed arrays. So until my future video content, I will see you then.